Hey everyone, welcome. I have an extremely important uh, spiritual principle to share with you since we are right before the event that we call Purim. And Purim, you know, is, is that, uh, you know, it's a very intricate holiday, even though it appears to be a simple thing. And I'm not actually going into the holiday itself, but you know, a lot of the principles of the holiday revolve around the concept of sharing. Make no mistake, there are so many secrets here, but I'm going to speak about how to increase our capacity for money, for love, and for happiness. So stay tuned till the end of the video. My name is Rabbi Abe, and I'm presenting this to you so that you can have more awareness, more consciousness from the secrets of the Kabbalah, secrets of life, so that this can assist us in making our life better and more fulfilled. So we know everything begins with a desire, okay? Life is all about desire and getting our desires fulfilled. That's the bottom line if you think about it. Whatever we do, whatever we initiate in life, whether it's a job, whether it's getting up out of bed in the morning, how we do it and what we do depends on our desire. But not just our desire, but of course, we'll all agree, the level, the level and quality of our desire. And that means no two, de no two desires are alike, right? And while we may think we have a desire for something, the, the, we don't necessarily, right? Because uh, just saying that I want doesn't really indicate that I have a desire. I can swear up and down that I want something, but eventually if I'm not willing to do whatever is necessary in order to achieve the thing that I want, then I don't really have a desire. I mean, isn't the proof in the pudding after all? So I can cry about it, I can moan about it, I can criticize other people for what they have, but in the end of the day, if I don't have the thing that I say I want, 99.999% of the time, there's only one reason for it, and the reason is I don't have enough of a desire, enough of a desire. I have enough desire to want, but wanting isn't the level of desire that is necessary to make things happen. So the question is, how do we increase this desire? How do we increase desire? How does a person who doesn't feel that they're achieving very much how do they make their desire bigger? How to achieve more? And again, more can be anything. More, as I said earlier, is more money, more sustenance, more, uh, more abundance of any sort, more love, which means the relationship that I don't have yet, that I want, and more happiness in life. Well, let's examine a successful, the average successful person. The average, average successful person cannot, and again, we're talking right now success, physical success, someone who's physically successful, who has created that success on their own. Now that's a very important distinction. Anyone who has become successful as a result of their own efforts is someone who is generally going to be a bigger thinker, a bigger thinker than someone who is not that. Now, what do I mean by a bigger thinker? A bigger thinker takes more of the picture of life into consideration. You know, a bigger thinker isn't generally very focused on his own or her own personal needs of the moment. Yes, they take care of what they need, but they're not overly busy with it. They're not overly busy with what they need to eat today. They're not overly busy with how they look or how they have to look. They're not overly busy with, you know, the minutia of things. Now, why would that be? Well, it's, it's possibly just very practical because, 
you know, the person who's busy with more doesn't have time for the smaller things. They need to be bigger with the bigger things. Now, of course, that makes sense. But it doesn't start like that, right? Bigger thinkers become bigger thinkers, but they're not necessarily born that way. So if I have a smaller desire and I'm busy with the focus of my life, my things, my whatever, I don't have the room or the capacity to think of more. So if that's where I am, let's say that's where I am today. How does a bigger thinker or how does a smaller thinker become a bigger thinker? And how does a bigger thinker become an even bigger thinker? And the answer sounds simple, but it's not simple. So if I would tell you the answer is learning how to share, you'd say, oh, what do you mean learning how to share, right? What is the meaning of sharing? Now, sharing doesn't mean what we think it means because just giving of ourselves, buying within itself, won't help us. It will not help us. So let me explain. Okay, let me explain. So here, let's say this is me. And this is me and my capacity to receive. Now, this little one ounce shot glass has a certain capacity to receive. And that's all it's going to receive. When it's full, it's full. So let's say this is me and my single life or me making 40 or $50,000 a year, or me, you know, wherever I am in my relationship or wherever, in my particular stage of life now, this is me. Now, when I'm full, which means I, 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 I go about my business trying to fill my desires and I'm you know, my desires and my capacity for whatever I want to receive. You know, I'm happy with the food that I eat and that my, my desires are for clothing and my desires are, you know, these are the focuses of my life. And my focus, are, if you're a man, my focuses are on getting dates. Uh, my focuses are on making a certain amount of money, that forty or $50,000 a year. And that's where I'm at. And that's what I have, let's say, or I'm close to it. This is me. And that's my capacity. Now, how would I change if I wanted? You know, again, when this is me, I will certainly be struggling and saying, I, you know, I wish I had more. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Even though I might not say it. I might look at others and see what they have, and I might have a little envy or maybe a little jealousy, and I'll say, you know, uh, uh, you know I'm in the uh, 95 percentile, of, and I want to be more. I want to be closer to the five percenters of life, whatever that means. People do say that. I want to be this. So how do I go from this to this? Isn't that a question? Don't we all have that question? How do we have more in life? How can we achieve more in life? Well, again, look at a successful person. Again, successful in the material world and, or someone who you would consider successful in any, you know, any aspect of life. They are usually busy less with themselves and more with other things, more with things that are outside themselves. So if they are in work or business, they will be more busy with, uh, you know, what's outside, clients. In other words, if you want to be successful with clients or in a work atmosphere, you really have to go outside yourself. You have to find opportunities to go out of your own framework. If you're already a business person, the business itself will cause you to do that. But probably the reason why you are able to be in the business is because you already somehow got into that idea of thinking outside of your own box. So being more successful at work also means being more useful for the other people in your job or your company, coming up with new ideas that may be better for your company, you know, it, it means looking for ways. Again, you have to have the vehicle. 
you have to look for the right vehicle to do that. Not every vehicle enables you to go too much outside of your frame. But again, if that's your nature to do that, you will probably have a suitable vehicle to do that. Because, you know, if I'm in a nice, safe job, and I'm happy with that, because I want safety, and I want my security in life, well, there are jobs that offer that. But they don't offer necessarily more opportunity for expansion. That's something that a person considers. Expansion in the 1% or material aspect of life means I also need to expand internally. Think about that. I need the opportunity to be able to expand. And I need to want that more than my safety and security. So if I want to go from here to here, the first thing that I need to do is empty this out. Because I can't hold more if I'm already in a place of whatever. I'm at my maximum capacity. I was content. I'm not feeling content anymore. But this can't hold any more. What do I need to do? I need to begin to empty this. Now, what does that mean? I need to look how I can share with other people. I need to look how to, I can more appreciate, but truly appreciate through effort, not through words. Words mean zero. Efforts are everything. Don't look at what a person says. Look at what the person does. And then you'll know if that person has appreciation. Because appreciation is a form of effort. True sharing is a form of effort, right? It requires us to go outside of ourselves. That's what effort is. Now, what happens when I really do that? I begin to make... Now, here's the trick. You see, just emptying out isn't the point. To be able to truly share with other people, this is hard especially if I'm kind of happy and secure and satisfied with what I have right now, it's difficult to let go. It's difficult to let go of that secure job that's paying me just enough so I can survive, but not enough to truly, you know, have what I want in life or what I really need. So letting go of that or truly appreciating the other things that I do have in my life uh, is its effort. It's painful. By the way, there's a secret. The smaller the vessel is, the more difficult it is to let go. So this effort, and it is an effort, there's a secret to that. It's called the light of mercy. Now when we create the light of mercy through this emptying out, what do we do? It's like going to the gym. I'm pushing to share. I'm pushing against my nature. And you know what the result is? I get a bigger vessel. I get a bigger vessel. When I continuously push against my nature, but I have to be going against my nature. I have to be going in the way of appreciation. I have to make effort. I have to risk. I have to take chances. I have to let go. I can't just sit and expect things to change because they never will. They will constantly stay the same or maybe get worse. Maybe get worse. If I'm lucky, if I'm lucky because you know, the secret of getting worse sometimes, if we truly merit, the universe will take things away. Nice. I know that sounds crazy. But the universe will take things away, so I'm forced into a situation of sharing and making effort. Because if I truly prayed, if I truly prayed to have more, well, maybe I didn't know what I was asking for, but then I will begin to lose things. <coughs> Why? 
This is the reason. This is the reason. To expand myself. And when I'm forced, pushed, or choose this expansive consciousness, that means I expand, my vessel expands. Now I have more capacity. Now I will attract more things. Now bigger opportunities will come into framework. Bigger, greater opportunities for the relationships that I'm looking for, for the work that I'm looking for, for the business I want to be in, for the clients that I need to help get me into the direction that I need to be in, whatever. I, having opportunity to connect, tap into more health, again, we will attract it. And that's the understanding. When we say expanding our capacity, expanding ourself, expanding our consciousness, that's what it means. Because in order to achieve more, we must expand our consciousness. There's no choice. <coughs> There's no two ways about it. <coughs> Excuse me. And it goes without saying, if I want this, well, then we need to start doing this. You see? But actually, if I'm already here, I will understand the secret. And when I understand that secret, this can. Again, we can fall into security, we can fall into safety, we can fall into that here. Again, <coughs> but if I'm really praying for more, and I'm truly appreciative of what I have, and I didn't fall into the status quo of wherever that is over here, then I can be in this place here, right, of the sharing, appreciation, and effort. And the truth of the matter is, there's really no limitation. There's no capacity. You know, we explained uh, in another video that one of the greatest secrets of all is never feeling we own anything here. If we want an endless endless capacity, well then, we should never feel that we own it, whatever we get, then we understand it's only borrowed, and then we are removing any limitations on our capacity for receiving. But let's take the first step, and this is the ideal time frame to be able to do that, to be able to create the changes that we want to have more, more abundance, more love, and more happiness. Be blessed, everyone. Wishing you all the best. And I will see you on the video, the next video. Give the video a thumbs up. Remember, I am offering 30-minute free consultations. Go to rabbiabe.com, and I will see you over there.